Alrighty, so Legend Difficulty Final Boss Merlin is here. Um, earlier, when the patch first dropped, they still had it saying Gother, which was kind of funny. Um, but the couple of times that I recorded with it saying that uh, didn't go so well. So here we are. Uh, if you don't already know about Legend Difficulty, it's really nothing too crazy. Um, it's basically just like a series of small challenges and stuff like that that you do to get a couple of diamonds here or there. There are um, like, I guess like top ranking rewards. So if you're if you're first, second, or third place, you get extra diamonds depending on what you know how well you did on some of these categories. The first two challenges have you know rankings on them, I guess, which is okay, but. I don't know, Final Boss Legend difficulty is pretty much there just for the little hat that you get. It's basically just like a small little crown to show, hey, you beat Final Boss Legend difficulty, um, and you literally only have to beat it one time to get the cosmetic. But if you wanna do the challenges, which are a little bit of fun, they're not too crazy. Um, I've already completed all of mine. They are clear with as much HP remaining as possible on all allies. I did that with this team right here. The Bond team is obviously super, super tanky, so you can literally just put on HP buffs and stuff like that, and they really don't do a whole lot of damage to you because you are type disadvantage. I don't even have gear on Keo, and he still survived pretty well. Um, I literally can put on HP food with this team right here, and it's like 199, uh, so I was able to actually clear the last challenge which is clear with the lowest possible combat class so you have to beat it with under 200k which i did that i literally just took off a couple of associations Keo doesn't even have gear on and that makes it to where i'm able to stay under the requirement and i was still able to beat it pretty easy peasy i only have a 1-6 bond by the way so it wasn't like oh hey just rush ult and then blast them to death it was i mean you, you know i it was okay it wasn't that bad uh, I still ended up, you know, surviving with a lot of HP. Deal as much damage as possible on one enemy, so you have to deal 350,000 damage. Um, a tip for that one specifically would be to make sure that you're using whatever you're going to be trying to deal big damage with on the first phase Merlin. Um, get rid of her two allies, uh, because then you can deal more damage to her, and then make sure you're doing it on that first phase Merlin, because she takes um, a lot more damage than the second phase Merlin does. Um, so... The team that I used for that was just like a fun little gimmicky team, Amplify. I literally just used Ram uh, or Rim and uh, I literally just built up a whole bunch of buffs, used a level three card uh, by ranking up with Gother and I dealt like 400, what was it, four, uh, oh, I don't know, it doesn't even have that one. I dealt like 417,000 or something like that, I can't remember exactly how much, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I beat the challenge either way, so that was pretty easy. Uh, obviously, you might not have that team or anything like that. Sariel can pretty much do the same thing if you want to just rush ult with him, uh, burst him down, or get like a level 3 single target ability card. Um, you may want to end up getting a couple of stacks with Green Gother if you have him. Uh, if you're using Red Gother, still build up a couple of stacks with him. Use uh, attack food, whatever it takes. Just get your damage up and then uh, burst him down. Uh, and then clear using the least number of skills and then clear with the least amount of damage taken by all allies. I did that with this team right here. Uh, Lost Vein is not ideal for this because uh, she, Merlin does end up doing extra damage to demons, which is kind of a problem. Uh, he will end up taking quite a bit of extra damage and stuff like that, but Sariel does really, really well and Lost Vein deals really well uh, or really good damage because of their uh, type advantage. Um, so you can pretty much just I don't know burst them down as quickly as possible so that way you're one getting the skill use uh, challenge like done a lot faster and then two you can go ahead and uh, make sure that you're getting your uh, what should we call it done your uh, don't take as much damage challenge done because obviously the faster you beat it the less damage you're going to take because you're not getting hit as much. Uh, so yeah, you basically just want to make sure that you're just throwing everything out that you can to make sure that you're dealing as much damage as possible. Uh, I don't know if this is necessarily going to be the team that I use to farm because you can see Lost Vein takes a lot of damage. Um, so I maybe want to change him out for something. I did try the one Escanor and that was okay. Like it wasn't great by any means. But... 
Yeah, I don't know. The Water Escanor is just obviously he's type disadvantage. He is a blue unit, so he ended up taking quite a bit of extra damage as well. Um, not nearly as much as Lost Vane takes, of course, but um, yeah, I don't know. So obviously that was not ideal. You don't want to hit into the, uh, the the reflect there as much as possible. You might want to end up going for the one with the reflect first, uh, just so that way you can kind of knock them down as far as that goes. Uh, that was not great either. But uh, yeah, as far as like speed farming this goes, I'll have to find somebody that's really decent that I want to swap out Lost Vein for. Um, but I mean, the Bond team honestly did, like did really really well as well. Um, but other than that, I mean, the fight's not too crazy. Like, just, you know, don't attack into the reflect like I did right there. I'm literally just kind of messing around. Um, and then you do want to watch out for the one on the right because she will put on a, like, she'll target your Gother pretty much and make it to where you cannot use buff cards, which is a little unfortunate because that means you can't rank up, etc. So that is definitely a little annoying. Um, I'm, I'm wondering how much I can do with uh, the gold card here um, once I'm not attack sealed, but I wonder if I can get that challenge done. I don't have attack food on, but let's see. I'm pretty sure I've built up a decent amount of Gother stacks at this point. As long as she doesn't somehow kill Sariel right here, which I kind of doubt. Okay, got rid of that. Hit Sariel instead of Gother for no reason. Um, let's go ahead and use that card right there, and then we'll just use the single target and then throw that off and see how much damage we can do. Alright, so that was actually only two, 214, which wasn't really that great. I'm kind of glad that I ended up using the Amplify team there. If you have those units, then it wouldn't be that bad. But, I don't know. I don't know what else you would really use for that, because you can't really use Escanor. He's just not going to not gonna cut it, really. I don't know if this is going to kill or not, but I kind of need it to, so. Oh, yeah, we should be fine here, I think. I don't know if, necessarily know if this kills the one on the right. Okay, pretty good. And then the ult. Yeah, I think if you ulted the one in the first phase, you could probably hit the 350 a little bit easier because that one definitely takes a little bit more damage or a little bit less damage. But uh, yeah, honestly, nothing too crazy. It's nothing you can't handle if you've been playing the game for a while. Obviously, if you can't do this, like if you can't do some of these challenges, these are sort of meant to be like end game challenges, like for um, you know people who have been playing the game for a while. So don't don't take it personally if you're a newer player and you just can't get some of this stuff done. Um, honestly, if you're a newer player, I would recommend you know not worrying too much about the challenges because they're really not going to give you that many rewards anyway it's literally just one diamond per challenge that you can complete uh, but if you can just try to like skim your way by and beat it in general just to get that little headpiece i would say that's a definite like a definite win in my book but uh yeah other than that the exchange or the exchange shop is pretty decent nothing too crazy honestly i don't i don't know why they time gate a lot of this stuff it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me uh, i would much rather just be able to buy this stuff straight up but there's a couple of nice things that I'm going to plan on picking up throughout the days and stuff like that that this is going on. It, it does only last for a week, if I'm not mistaken. So you want to make sure that you're going ahead and grabbing uh, your runs and stuff like that and getting everything out of the exchange shop as soon as possible so that way you don't miss out on the rewards. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you have any team recommendations that worked for you for any of these challenges, feel free to leave those below as well because I'm sure, you know, not everybody is going to have the team and the units that I have and I used in the video. So, you know, tell people what worked for you. That way other people might be able to use those teams and stuff like that so that way they can, you know, beat this as well. So thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more content in the future, and I'll see you guys in the, in the next video.